What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV, and in this video we're going to be looking at the key differences between the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus versus the iPhone 10. Now following the announcement of the new iPhones, uh, there's been lots of discussion about the upgrade cycle, uh, whether you should wait or whether you should upgrade from the 7 and 7 Plus uh, to the 10. Now, when it comes to the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, uh, realistically speaking, uh, they are only incremental updates and we all thought they were going to be called the iPhone 7S and 7S Plus anyway. So if you are thinking about the 8 and 8 Plus, then I would say, uh, generally speaking, it's not really worth upgrading from the 7 and 7 Plus to these uh, because there isn't a huge deal of a difference. But if you are thinking about the 10, then there are some key differences that we're going to be discussing in this video. Now, let's kick off with the size difference initially. The iPhone 10 kind of sits in between the sizes of the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. It's slightly larger compared to the 7, around 5.3 millimeters in terms of the height and 3.8 millimeters in terms of the width. And it's also slightly thicker. And in comparison to the iPhone 7 Plus, it's quite a bit smaller, 14.6 millimeters in terms of the height and seven millimeters in terms of the width. Although the iPhone 10 is just 0.4 millimeters thicker compared to the iPhone 7 Plus. The weight of the iPhone 10 is also in between these two. So you've got uh, 36 grams more compared to the iPhone 7 and 14 grams less compared to the iPhone 7 Plus. Now bearing all of this information in mind, it's quite impressive to see the screen size of the iPhone 10, which is 5.8 inches compared to the 4.7 and 5.8 inch displays on the 7 and 7 Plus. Now, Apple have managed to do this by finally, finally getting rid of those bezels. We've had these large bezels for a long time now uh, from the 6, the 6S, the 7, as well as on the 8s now as well. Uh, so it's finally uh, nice to see that Apple have uh, now caught up with the competition in terms of a bezel-less display, and it looks absolutely beautiful. And this display essentially means that you're going to be able to get so much more screen in a small body. So if you're somebody who's using the iPhone 7 right now, and uh, the reason you didn't go for the 7 Plus was because it was a little bit too big, now you can experience a larger display size without having too much of a larger device, which is great to see. Now it's not only the smaller bezels which make the iPhone 10 display more appealing, it is also the technology. We finally have OLED technology on the iPhone 10. On the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, we have LCD technology. Now what this means is you're gonna get much better colors uh, as well as deeper blacks on the iPhone 10. If you look at the contrast ratio, we've got around 13 to 1400 to one contrast ratio on the 7 and 7 Plus. On the iPhone 10, you've got 1 million to one. So that should just go to show you how much better the display is here on the iPhone 10. Many of the manufacturers have been using OLED technology for a long time, but this is the first time we've got OLED technology on an iPhone and it's definitely welcomed. Now we've got some more advantages of the iPhone 10 display. And that is the PPI. You've got a higher pixel density, 458 compared to 401 on the iPhone 7 Plus and 326 on the iPhone 7. So quite a bump up in terms of resolution. And this is basically going to mean that your details are going to be sharp and uh, text and things are going to be very, very crisp on the iPhone 10 compared to the other models. Now moving on to the build and design, on the 7 and 7 Plus you have a metal uni body uh, which uh, feels and looks uh, really premium and great. With the iPhone 10, you now have a metal frame with glass panels on the front and back. Now the glass panel at the back is to enable wireless charging, something we'll be talking about a little bit later. And in terms of design, I mean, both of these do look premium. However, one thing you are gonna have to bear in mind is that on the iPhone 10, if you do drop it on its back, uh, you might crack the glass. This is something you don't really have to worry about on the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus uh, because you probably get a bit of a dent or something, but not something as bad as shattered glass. Now, one of the things that you can do is pick up a skin from our channel sponsor, Dbrand. This is gonna give you some more grip on your devices and also allow you to customize the look. I'm gonna be leaving a link to Dbrand in the description below. In terms of the different color options available, you've only got two color options on the iPhone 10, uh, silver and space gray initially. We might have some more later. You've got five color options on the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, and you might still be able to get hold of the red version, uh, this might be limited in certain places. I don't think Apple is selling it anymore. All of these devices are IP67 water and dust resistant. So this is still here on all devices. Now let's look towards the internals. This is where we also have 
uh, quite a few improvements. So the 7 and 7 Plus have the Apple A10 Fusion chip, uh, which is really fast and it's actually one of the fastest that I've tested over the past year. So I'd definitely say it lasts around about another year at least uh, and you shouldn't have any problems with it. With the iPhone 10, you have Apple's A11 Bionic chip, which is supposed to be very, very fast, up to 70% faster compared to the A10. Uh, now the A10 is already really fast, so it'll be interesting to see how fast the A11 is. And there's been a big emphasis on AR. This is something Apple are really pushing and it looks really impressive. And the A11 chip has been optimized for AR. We'll do some speed tests and things as soon as the iPhone 10 retail version is out. So we can really see how much faster it is. And in terms of storage, you've got either 64 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes for the iPhone 10. Uh, for the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, you've got 32, 128 gig or 256 gigabytes. Now, Apple are no longer gonna be selling the 256 gig version. Uh, they're only gonna be having the 32 and 128 GB options. So just something to bear in mind, if you've not already got one, you might have to pick one second hand somewhere. Uh, but if you are gonna be buying it directly from Apple, those are the only two versions that are gonna be available. Now let's move on to the cameras. The iPhone 7 has a single 12 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization and an F1.8 aperture. It performed really well in my experience. And with the iPhone 7 Plus, you had the primary camera, which is the same, but you also have a secondary camera, which is a telephoto camera, and that does not have optical image stabilization. And it has an F2.8 aperture. And as well as the optical zoom, it also gives you a portrait mode, which blurs the background. And this does work really well. With the iPhone 10, you also have a dual 12 megapixel camera setup but this time both are optically stabilized, which is really nice to see. The primary camera has an f1.8 aperture, but the secondary camera has an f2.4 aperture, which should give you better results in low light. We've still got the portrait mode, but this time we've also got a lighting mode, so portrait lighting. This is gonna allow you to change the lighting effect for your portraits. And it's also gonna allow you to do that after the fact. So you've got some improvements here for the cameras, especially compared to the iPhone 7. Now we've got some more improvements in terms of the video as well. The iPhone 7 and 7 Plus can film up to 4K at 30 frames a second, or you've got 720p at 240 frames a second slow motion, uh, 1080p at 120 frames a second slow motion. With the iPhone 10, you've got 4K at 60 frames a second. This is super, super impressive. and should give you some nice and smooth video. I believe this is the first smartphone uh, with this capability, if not uh, one of the first. You've also got 1080p at 240 frames a second. Very, very impressive here in terms of the video. So you've uh, got some nice improvements here. And in terms of the front facing cameras, you've got seven megapixels on all of these here with an F2.2 aperture. But with the iPhone 10, because you've got some additional sensors on the front facing camera, you will be able to apply effects and things. So you're gonna be able to do the portrait mode from the selfie camera. You'll be able to do the studio lighting as well. And you've also got something called Animojis, which is basically animated emojis, which uh, you will track your face and uh, translate that to emoji form if you're into that kind of a thing. For the operating system, you've got iOS 11 and both of these. iOS 11 may not currently be on your iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, but will be rolling out very, very soon. On the iPhone 10, it's gonna come out of the box. Now moving on to the additional features, the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus have Touch ID. That's the fingerprint scanner on the home button. Works quite well in my experience, uh, really no complaints with it. With the iPhone 10, there is no longer any space for Touch ID at the front. Uh, lots of people were thinking it's gonna go to the back or maybe embedded within the display. Uh, unfortunately, it's none of those. Uh, we now have Face ID. This is the only advanced secure option to unlock your phone and things. And it's gonna scan your face. Uh, it's gonna do a 3D scan of your face to unlock your device should work well. Uh, I don't know how convenient it's gonna be compared to the 7 and 7 Plus uh, just by touching it. Uh, this is something that we're gonna have to test out and try out uh, and we'll take some time getting used to. Uh, you've got stereo speakers on all the devices here. So an earpiece as well as a, a bottom facing speaker. So that's nice to see and no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This is not here on the iPhone 10 either. So if you do have some headphones with a 3.5 millimeter connector, uh, you will have to use the dongle that comes out of the box uh, with all of these. Now, in terms of the batteries, the iPhone 7 has a 1960 mAh battery. The iPhone 7 Plus has a 2900 mAh battery. 
Uh, the iPhone 7, I wouldn't say is too great uh, in terms of battery life. The iPhone 7 Plus has been pretty good in my experience, but it did deteriorate over time. Obviously, it's been a year since I've had it as well. Now, with the iPhone 10, they've not specified exactly what the battery size is, but they've said you're gonna get two hours more time uh, compared to the iPhone 7. So I would say it's roughly in between the 7 and 7 Plus in terms of battery life. Uh, we'll have to definitely test this out. Uh, the advantage that you do have on the iPhone 10 is the introduction of wireless charging. And that is thanks to that glass back. This is something you're not gonna be able to do um, out of the box anyway with the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. You can uh, get these wireless cards and things like that which plug into the lightning connector. You can cheat it, but uh, it's not gonna be proper wireless charging like you've got built in on the iPhone 10. You've also got fast charging on the iPhone 10, but Apple really haven't disclosed too much information about this. Whether we're gonna be getting the fast charger out of the box or not, uh, this is yet to be seen. Now finally, moving on to the prices, this is where it gets really interesting. So the 7 and 7 Plus are currently available and if you are gonna be buying them directly from Apple, uh, the 7 starts at 550 pounds of dollars and the 7 Plus starts at 670 pounds of dollars. So a little bit cheaper compared to what they were at last year, but uh, if you do look around, you might be able to find some better deals for these because they are your old devices. You might be able to pick something up secondhand or something. Now with the iPhone 10. It is very, very expensive. We heard lots of rumors and things, but the starting price is $1,000 or pounds. So definitely a very, very premium price tag here on the iPhone 10. And if you do compare it to something like the iPhone 7, you know, you are paying pretty much double the price of the iPhone 7 for the iPhone 10. So that is quite a significant cost that you will have to consider. And in terms of availability, the iPhone 10 is gonna be available uh, for pre-order from the 27th of October, and it's coming out on the 3rd of November. Now, realistically speaking, I'm sure stock levels will be pretty low and demand will be very high. So it could be quite some time before you actually get hold of the iPhone 10 unless you get in very, very early. So guys, that is the comparison of the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus versus the iPhone 10. Uh, I think we do have some important improvements here, especially in terms of the display. We've got now Face ID as well as the improved A11 chip. So uh, there are definitely lots of things here to upgrade to. And especially if we consider from the seven to the eight, uh, that is just an incremental update. The proper update is from the seven and seven plus to the iPhone 10 but that is at a very, very heavy price tag. So this is something that you're gonna have to bear in mind. Can you afford to dish out that much money for the iPhone 10? Uh, if you can, it uh, looks like a very promising phone. Uh, if you can't, then you know I am pretty sure the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus uh, will be good for most people for another year. They tend to have a two year life cycle. So I'd advise maybe sticking onto these and waiting to see what Apple comes out with next year. What do you guys think of the iPhone 10? Definitely let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then please do hit that thumbs up button for me. It really does help me out. And if you haven't already, then be sure to subscribe and switch on notifications. There's plenty more content coming up on here. Thanks for watching. This is Safa on Super Saf TV, and I'll see you next time.